Welcome back to the series that is all about Russia. Each episode we explore one of Russia's many federal subjects. Today is Chukotka's turn. Hello and welcome to 7 Facts. First of all, I need to explain one thing. Chukotka is not a republic or krai, it's an autonomous okrug. Roughly translated, that's a district, province or county. Okrugs were created in the 1920s to provide autonomy to the indigenous people of the north. But from a federal standpoint, it sits equal to all the other subjects of the Russian Federation. Good. Now, about Chukotka. This okrug is a big one. It's about 6% larger than the US state of Texas at more than 730,000 square kilometers. But at the same time, this is the second least populated federal subject of the country and the least densely populated. While Texas is home to about 29 million people, Chukotka harbors just 50,000. How is that possible? It's the most northeasternly region of the entire country and about half of it is above the Arctic Circle. So yeah, it gets pretty damn cold here. Also, fun fact, since the Alaskan Purchase, Chukotka has been the only part of Russia that has territory in the Western Hemisphere. With regards to the history of this place, you might want to pay attention. Once upon a time, a long time ago, Chukotka was part of Beringia, the land bridge that united Eurasia with the Americas. And so, these are the lands that enabled humans to migrate to the mighty western continents. Although I guess for them it was the east, but you get my point. But that was a long time ago. The more recent history began when Russian and Cossack explorers started to arrive in this area in the 17th century. Occupying these lands was not easy and the Russians failed multiple times, both because of the environment and the resistance of the local Chukchi people. But fearful that other European powers would settle these lands, imperial authorities continued to push the exploration and exploitation of the lands until Chukotka became a Russian district. The last part that came firmly under their control was Wrangel Island and that was in 1924, over 280 years after the first contact. As any federal subject, Chukotka also has a capital, the town of Anadur. This capital of only 13,000 people is the easternmost town of the entire federation. It was founded in 1889 and named after an indigenous tribe, the Yukagir, a name that was corrupted to its current form, Anadur. Today this town is at the same time isolated and well connected. It's a port, an important one of the Bering Sea and it's also served by an airport. But, apart from some roads connecting Anadur to some surrounding villages, there are no other roads that lead to this place. The 1800km Anadur Highway aims to change that, but it's still under construction. So if you enjoy cold weather and isolation mixed with a combination of Russian and indigenous cultures, Anadur might be the place for you. Before we get to the next fact, I'd like to ask you something. This video isn't sponsored, so perhaps you'd consider supporting this channel by becoming a patron. If you still enjoy my content, go visit my Patreon page and help this channel out. And with that said, let's go to fact number 4. What is there to see in such a vast, cold, desolate place, you might be asking yourself. Well, how about Lake Ilgugutgan? This isn't the biggest or the deepest or any other sort of est lake. But what is special about it is that it's actually an impact crater. It's about 12 kilometers in diameter and 174 meters deep, which to be fair makes it a pretty large lake. The actual impact crater though is about 6 kilometers wider and an additional 200 meters deeper. That's because in the 3.5 million years since this impact occurred, the lake wasn't covered by any glaciers, so there was a continuous depositing of sediments that now is about 200 meters thick. Any meteor that can create such a huge crater would have devastated everything hundreds of kilometers around it. Unfortunately, if you fancy seeing El Gugutgun with your own eyes, that will not be easy. There are no roads or settlements anywhere near this lake. 
Despite having a very small population, Chukotka is actually an ethnically diverse place. A little over half of the people are indeed Russian ethnics, but there are still several indigenous tribes that continue to live here, like the Yukagir, Chuvans, Evans or Yupiks. I'm sure you haven't heard of them until now, but I assure you they do exist. The largest indigenous group though is made up of the Chukchi, the same people after whom the Yokrug was named. Although their life is a harsh one, they managed to endure everything nature and foreign powers threw at them. Their religion assumes that every object, whether animate or not, has assigned a spirit. Why am I telling you this? Because such beliefs can also be found on the other side of the Pacific in Native American societies. And that's no coincidence. Genetically, the Chukchi people are the closest Asian relatives of Native Americans, both from the North and the South. So, this is the easternmost point of Russia, with the Chukchi Peninsula projecting towards Alaska, forming the Bering Strait. This was the great land bridge that enabled humans to migrate to the Americas, so it's an important spot. But, what about the rest of the district? Well, the north is basically an arctic desert, with little precipitation and lots of cold. But other areas are a little bit better. Large parts are covered with moss, lichen and arctic plants, much like the western part of its Alaskan counterpart. And further south and around the Gulf of Anadur, trees of all sorts also grow. But of course, that doesn't mean the cold is gone. The average temperature fluctuates between minus 22 degrees Celsius in January to about 10-15 degrees in July, but these figures can sometimes drop to minus 46 in the winter and sometimes even summer days can have negative temperatures. It's hard to imagine living in such places and yet the people of Chukotka seem to handle it pretty good. Now, I saved the best for last. Part of the Chukotka Okrug is an island called Wrangel. It's a protected, uninhabited large island northwest of the Bering Strait. At first glance, although beautiful, this is not a special island in any way. Except that this was the last place woolly mammoths roamed the earth. In 2000 BC, these giants of ancient times were still around on this frozen island, while everywhere else on earth, they were gone. It seems that, like everywhere else on the planet, their extinction coincided with the appearance of human tribes in the area. By 1700 BC, there were no mammoths left on Wrangel Island. It is believed that climate change was the cause of the population drop of mammoths all around the world, but ultimately, the excessive hunting our ancestors overtook was what wiped out the species altogether. Please leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed this content. Leave your comments downstairs and don't forget there's a Patreon page where you can support my work. I hope to see you next time. Bye.